Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Fantastic Fest 2023. I am sitting here with the filmmakers behind. There's something in the barn. I told you this before we started rolling. I love the fact that this is gateway horror for everybody to enjoy. Congratulations on your movie. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. So a lot of our viewers are first going to be learning about your movie right now through the festival. Whoever would like to do this. Can someone give a brief synopsis of your movie? That's you. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, is you. This You're is very uh, good uh, It's the story about an American f- family who inherited a farm in Norway. Uh, they're Norwegian Americans by ancestry, but they've probably never been there. And they go to this farm, uh, and on this farm, there lives a creature that really doesn't appreciate anything to be honest but at least not new influences and new people so the movie is based on actual barn elf mythology can one of you run us through that mythology but then also tell us what things you've added to it to make it cinematic or more cinematic maybe yeah i mean the mythology goes way back a long time um, but it's never really been done anything you know to sort of this very very specific folklore in in Norway other than uh, songs and postcards and things like that and uh, so this is the first time obviously that there is a movie about it uh, we did add the, I mean there that we all know from childhood that the barn elves are pretty grumpy and kind of scary um, but they're also very helpful uh, and they like a balance in their life so a balance where humans and elves in the barn can live side by side and they kind of help each other if you know if the barn elf gets some food and, and stuff like that then you know the barn elf will help so we added a couple of uh, rules that they do not like too much noise uh, nothing that is very very modern you know is a very traditionalist and um, it doesn't like loud noises and changes and you know things like that and here comes the americans that is everything like that. Yeah, this yeah. makes all the sense <laughs> in the world. Um, is there any other Norwegian mythology and folklore that you would think would make a really good horror movie? That's also you question. Well, there's <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty. Really, really, really. Uh, we already had some right now. We had Troll, right? Yes. Which is with the Norwegian Trolls, the original Trolls. Mm. And you had Tal, that's some years ago, about the Huldra the female uh, uh, temptress, which is very much like the sirens. Mm. Uh, but there is one called Nucken, yeah. which is a really, really creepy one. Who what lives, is that about? Uh, he lives uh, in, uh, in, in the, the lakes. In the forests, in the lakes, and yeah. in the rivers, and uh, super scary. Lures you out and pulls you under. I feel like that kind of mythology is so much richer everywhere else in the world than it is in the States. But I want to take this idea and kind of flip it around for both of you. Let's say we were making a movie and like you are at uh, you are in a family that's moving to the States and there's some sort of like mythical creature here that you would piss off to the point that it would attack you. What creature would that be? Um, I don't know, some Wall Street guy, maybe? <laughs> yeah. That's the right answer. Like the uh, Trump, uh, pro Trump guy. Yeah. We were talking about this before, and I was like, the only thing that I could choose is probably like, like a werewolf because I love animals, so I would go to pet it and then it would just bite me and then I would be now go to I would be the victim that's of that horror movie. To begin with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love holiday horror movies also. I'm very happy that you guys gave us another uh, Christmas movie to love right now. If you had the opportunity to turn another holiday into a horror movie, what holiday would you choose and why? I would choose Easter. Um, because we also have this tradition in Scandinavia um, to do um, really dark crime uh, TV shows during Easter. Um, sort of like, you know, six, seven episodes, something like yeah, that. Nordic Noir. It's We've very, very Nordic that Noir. For and it really forever. belongs to, to Easter. Um, also, Easter is a time where you read, you know, really dark and violent crime books. Uh, so it would actually be amazing to do something that is very, you know, belongs to Easter because that's also the time we do spend time uh, with family and uh, we're all gathered in cabins in the mountains and uh, it's a good opportunity to do something that uh, is a new kind of a holiday. Okay, I'm always into that. Same for you, Easter or something else? For Easter also maybe mix up with the Bible uh, history 
with all the, the crazy people really buying into that. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's 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 a good mix. And a bunny, of course. Okay, yeah, of course. You need you need a, a horrific bunny as well. All right, so for your movie, in terms of it being a Christmas horror movie, is there any other Christmas horror movie you've seen that you think did it well and you kind of wanted to embrace and emulate it, but also I want to know something you've never seen in a Christmas horror movie before that you wanted to make sure was in your own? Shit, that was a lot of questions. Big questions. Yeah, Two-parter. Was... <laughs> Two-parter. Opposites there. <laughs> I mean, we didn't necessarily look... I mean, obviously, yes, we did look at some Christmas movies, but not horror movies. We were really looking at Gremlins and things like that. It's a horror movie. Absolutely. That counts. But not, that necess counts. <laughs> not necessarily a Christmas uh, as such. Um so, but it was really about looking back to the, you know, the uh, the movies that we grow up with, and that felt a little too scary when we were twelve years old, and also that had a lot of fun comedy in it. Um, so it was basically that. What's an example of a movie like that for you that you grew up with? As always, you know, grow. You started watching things that were way too violent and way too scary. Um, that is just sort of. I think that's the way in, but you can't really make that if your intention is to <laughs> is to make something for you know. I'm 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 thinking very much that I'm making this for my own son who's uh, 13. Uh, but I also know that he does watch things that I am thinking, you shouldn't watch this. But I, also, I don't care because I watch the same things. I was going to say, <laughs> I'd be the worst person to give anyone advice yeah, yeah, on yeah. what's okay for their children yeah, just yeah. because I grew up watching like the yeah. most inappropriate things saying, in the world. You're good. It's fine. It's I feel fine. Like, like I'm a sound and sane horror lover right now. So nothing bad The only happens. thing I ask afterwards or before he starts watching you know, something that is way too scary is maybe don't go around afterwards and do what they are doing in this movie don't kill people Ugh, i'm not stupid honestly <laughs> it's I would, fine i would see a movie like this go to a barn where there could be a barn yeah, elf, yeah, and yeah. i would try to yeah. summon it and make it do these crazy yeah, things yeah. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about the casting of your family here. So after that two-part question, I've got a four-part question oh now for you. I want to know something unique about each of them as an actor, where it demands something different from you as an actor's director. Uh, I mean, we can start with Martin Starr, who is insanely funny, I think. Uh, but also, he's funny in a way where I'm not really sure at all times if he's joking or if he's serious. So that was kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is like his, his comedy yeah, yeah. style. So, so you sort of have to sort of move around that fact and always kind of, is he joking now or is he serious? I don't know. I just have to sort of take for granted that it's actually serious. And then I approach it as a serious thing. And it normally turns out he was actually joking regardless. So that took a little bit of handling. Um, Amrita, who plays the mom or the new mom? Stepmom. Stepmom, new mom. Um, I never thought she was as funny uh, as she is. I was thought she's a great actress, uh, but she's incredibly funny and incredibly rude, which is perfect for my sense of humor. <laughs> and then you had the two kids. Um, so, uh, Zoe uh, is American-Norwegian. She doesn't have that much experience, but um, I found her to be incredibly professional and really good. Sort of, I've, I've been thinking afterwards that, you know, she's a, she could do a good career of being a screen, uh, screen queen. Mm -hmm. She's really good at that, I think. I second uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have Towns, who has done just not movies at all you know it's just yeah he's, he's done some school plays but he's just a kid um, and I think with kids who doesn't you know haven't had the experience of you know being on a movie set where there are very strict rules and you know we do this and uh, he it was kind of making him understand that this is actually a job you can't mess around and you know just have fun 
uh, all the time. You're, you actually have to focus. <laughs> it's fair enough. You do a yeah, lot yeah. of fun stuff in this movie, though. <laughs> to build on that with the two of them, what is something you appreciated about collaborating with them that you're excited for more directors to get to experience when they make movies with them in the future? I always like to think that filmmaking generally is uh, something that you do together, uh, not only with the actors, but uh, with the whole crew. Uh, it's a very collaborative uh, process and I always encourage that. So it's it's that, nothing else. Yes, I like that approach. All right, talking about your, your barn elf now, can you maybe pinpoint the biggest difference between how you pictured the barn elf looking, like day one, first design you ever came up with, and now what we see in the finished product? Do you want to say something now? Yeah. We're talking a lot. We, we, he's exactly what we wanted to have. Yeah. It, 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 he really is. And that's very much due to the actor we, we cast in the role, Kiran Shah, who's been doing every big movie since Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. He was, he was Elijah Wood's uh, stand-in for all the scenes where he was not playing himself. So when we got him and fitted him into what we hoped he could be, he was amazingly perfect right away. Yeah. And he, he looks like, if, if, you, if you look at the postcards of the barn elves throughout the centuries in Norway, he's the picture of them. He really is, so he's, he's fantastic. No, it truly really is. And I think when I look back at the first concept drawings that we had of the Barn Elf, it's exactly like that. Yeah. It's perfect. He is something else in that role. All right, looking at some of your big set pieces here, going into production, which one did you think would be the most challenging to pull off? And ultimately, was that the toughest? Or did a different one catch you by surprise? No, I think maybe. Obviously, everything that, you know, involves, um, you know, a lot of action and stunts and craziness, uh, like the, the scene that we call the home invasion where the elves are attacking for the first time. Um it's complex and, and, and tricky to shoot and tricky to organize, but everything is, is in the planning, obviously. So it was just about you know making sure that we planned everything as perfectly as we could. The other, I guess, problem that we had, I guess, and that, uh, was uh, when we moved to Norway to um, shoot all the exterior scenes uh, and being a Christmas movie, you, you want snow. Uh, and that's also why we want to shoot in Norway. Uh, but this is global warming, so there were no snow there. When the yeah, <laughs> we, were, we were supposed to shoot in January, February, but we were shut down by COVID. And yeah. that, that year, it was two meters with snow. It was so much snow, everything we wanted. But we had to push it eight months and shoot in the fall instead. So we started in studio and then moved over to exterior in Norway. And when we when we landed in Norway to start in shooting December. there in in late November, yeah. uh, there was absolutely no snow. And we were starting to shoot the day after. It started to snow that night. So we really got it. But that, that's like a challenge you just get. We started to, to haul in trucks, truckloads with snow from the mountaintops. From the mountains, yeah. uh, but that's, that's life. Uh, <laughs> That's life, and that's the nature of filmmaking. Oh, yeah, absolutely, is. absolutely. Very much. There is no; it's only problems. That's yeah. all, That's all there is. So, so the weather, the weather was a, a challenge you had to overcome. Can you give me another example of like a day on set when nothing was going to plan? You had to find a creative way to pivot, but a scene turned out better off because of it. I don't think necessarily. You know, there was you know days with trouble because it was so cold. Because it can be extremely cold without snow. So uh, um, for the whole time I was, you know, we were shooting, you know, it was super cold. So basically, you know, then you run into problems where the equipment doesn't work oh. any longer because it's all so finely tuned. It's all, you know, very fine technical cameras and they just shut down. <laughs> so no. I, I can't really say the scene, and the scene got better. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but, that is a fair concern. But then you have to take all the gear inside, and you have to, you know, make sure that you know they they warm up a little bit, and then okay, you're looking at the oh, okay, we'll lose three hours, and you just have to shoot it regardless. Um, you know, it becomes something uh, if it's better or worse. I don't know. Uh, at the same time, to say. they were so. Uh, sharpened and ready to go because they were so cold so they, they yeah, yeah, yeah. wanted to nail the scenes immediately uh, yeah and there was a couple of times there where for instance I was extremely 
worried about uh, Martin and the rest of the uh, the family because they were just hanging out outside. Uh, and I think you should, you know, we're setting up camera. You don't have to be here. Go inside and warm up. Uh, but Martin, especially, he really wanted to be outside because then he got frost, real frost in his beard. And I just felt like that that looks good. My worst nightmare <laughs> is not being attacked by angry barn elves. It's being in a location like that where I'm just too cold the entire yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big baby in the cold. I'm the only <laughs> one in 100 degree Austin weather complaining about being in air conditioning. <laughs> so we are in Austin. We're here for Fantastic Fest. You both said that you have seen some other movies here. And one of my favorite things about this festival is that it's the genre loving community all together and it's everyone being supportive of each other's work. So can you each pinpoint something you saw another filmmaker do in their movie that made you think like, damn, that's impressive and I'm inspired by it. I mean, we just came out of uh, Kim's video, uh, which was a really, really fun movie, a documentary, uh, super fun. And I think the most inspiring thing there is that they actually did everything that they did in that film. And I went back to uh, Italy to retrieve a big collection of uh, films and they staged a big heist. So they did a lot of things that I was thinking, I would never do this. Just <laughs> so that I was one's super high impressive. up on my list yeah, yeah, to yeah, see yeah. here. Yeah. I, I saw River, uh, which oh, is another one I'm dying to see. fantastic in the sense that it, yeah, it has a concept and it just follows through. And it has this two minute loop going on and on and on. And you're thinking they can't pull it up, but they really, really do. And it's so inspiring just to see them doing it and thinking, well, they, it's ways of thinking differently and doing things differently. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. It's the best thing about a festival like this. Your movie and you two are in very good company here. Huge congratulations on There's Something in the Barn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And to Merry everybody Christmas. out there, if you like holiday horror, do not miss it. Check it out and stay tuned for more from Fantastic Fest 2023 very soon.